Hi, my name is Joy Horner and I'm going to read a great story from Women Who Run With The Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. Um, it's one of my favourites called Seal Skin Soul Skin. And to me, it represents how even when things are done to us and even when things are stolen from us, we can reclaim them. Um, and we can regain our power. So here we go. Seal skin, soul skin. During a time that once was, is now gone forever, and will come back again soon, there is day after day of white sky, white snow, and all the tiny specks in the distance are people or dogs or bear. Here nothing thrives for the asking. The winds blow hard and the people have come to wear their parkas and mamclets boots sideways on purpose now. Here words freeze upon the open air and whole sentences must be broken from a speaker's lips and thawed at the fire so people can see what has been said. Here the people live in the white and abundant hair of old Aniluk, the old grandmother, the old sorceress who is Earth herself. And it was in this land that there lived a man, a man so lonely that over years tears had carved great chasms into his cheeks. He tried to smile and be happy. He hunted, he trapped, and he slept well, but he wished for human company. Sometimes out in the shallows in his kayak, when a seal came near, he remembered the old stories about how seals were once human. And the only reminder of that time was their eyes, which were capable of portraying those looks, those wise and wild and loving looks. And sometimes when he felt such a pang of loneliness that tears coursed down the well-used cracks in his face. One night he hunted past dark and found nothing. As the moon rose in the sky and the ice flows gl glistened, he came to a great spotted rock in the sea. And it appeared to his keen eye that upon that old rock there was movement of the most graceful kind. He paddled slow and deep to be closer. And there, atop the mighty rock, danced a group of women. Naked as the first day they lay upon their mother's bellies. Well, he was a lonely man, with no human friends. But in memory, he stayed and watched. The women were like beings made of moon milk, and their skin shimmered with little silver dots, like those on the salmon in springtime and the women's feet and hands were long and graceful. So beautiful were they that the man sat stunned in his boat, the water lapping, taking him closer and closer to the rock. He could hear the magnificent women laughing. At least they seemed to laugh. Or was it the water laughing at the edge of the rock? The man was confused, for he was dazzled. But somehow the loneliness that had weighed on his chest like a wet hide was lifted away. And almost without thinking, as though he was meant, he jumped up onto the rock and stole one of the seal skins laying there. He hid behind an outcropping and he pushed the seal skin into the Quanuk Parker. A 
As soon as one of the women called in a voice that was the most beautiful he'd ever heard. Like the whales calling at dawn, or no, maybe it was more like the newborn wolves tumbling down in the spring, or but, well no, it was something better than that. But it didn't matter, because what were the women doing now? Why, they were putting on their seal skins, and one by one, the seal women were slipping into the sea, yelping and crying happily. Except for one. The tallest of them searched high and searched low for her seal skin, but it was nowhere to be found. The man felt emboldened. By what, he didn't know. He stepped from the rock, appealing to her. Woman, be my wife. I am a lonely man. No, I cannot be wife, she said, for I am of the other, the ones who live. Temer Kwomvek, beneath. Be my wife, insisted the man. In seven summers I will return your sealskin to you, and you may stay or you may go as you wish. The young seal woman looked long into his face with eyes that but for her true origins seemed human. Reluctantly, she said, I will go with you. After seven summers, it shall be decided. So in time, they had a child who they named Uruk. And the child was lithe and fat. In the winter, the mother told Uruk tales of the creatures that lived beneath the sea, while the father whittled a bear in white stone with his long knife. When his mother carried the child Uruk to bed, she pointed out through the smoke hole to the clouds and all their shapes, except instead of counting the shapes of raven and bear and wolf, she recounted the stories of walrus, of whale, seal and salmon, for those were the creatures that she knew. But as time went on, her flesh began to dry out. First it flaked and then it cracked. The skin of her eyelids began to peel. The hairs of her head began to drop to the ground. She became... Naluk, palest white, her plumpness began to wither. She tried to conceal her limp. Each day her eyes, without her willing it so, became more dull. She began to put out her hand in order to find her way, for her sight was darkening. And so it went until one night when she took Uruk, the child, who was awakened by shouting. And he sat upright in his sleeping skins. He heard a roar like a bear that was his father berating his mother. He heard a crying like silver rung on stone. That was his mother. You hid my seal skin seven long years ago, and now the eighth winter comes. I want what I am made of returned to me, cried the seal woman. I do not know what I would do. I only know I must have what I belong to. And you, woman, would leave if I gave it to you, boomed the husband. And you would leave me wifeless and the boy motherless. You are bad. And with that, the husband tore the hide flap of the door aside and disappeared into the night. The boy loved his mother so much, he feared losing her and so cried himself to sleep. Only to be awakened by the wind. A strange wind, it seemed to call him. Ura. Uruk. And out of bed he climbed so hastily that he put his parka on upside down and pulled on his mucklucus 
only halfway up. Hearing his name called over and over, he dashed into the starry, starry night. Urak. The child ran out to the cliff overlooking the water, and there, far out in the windy sea, was a huge shaggy silver seal. Its head was enormous, its whiskers drooped to its chest, its eyes were deep yellow. Urak. The boy scrambled down the cliff and stumbled at the bottom over a stone. No, a bundle that had rolled out of a cleft in the rock. The boy's hair lashed at his face like a thousand rains of ice. Urak. The boy scratched open the bundle and shook it out. It was his mother's seal skin. Oh, and he could smell her all through it. And as he hugged the seal skin to his face and inhaled her scent, her soul slammed through him like a sudden summer wind. Oh, he cried with pain and joy and lifted the skin again to his face and again her soul passed through his. Oh, he cried again, for he was being filled with the unending love of his mother. The old silver seal way out sank slowly beneath the water. The boy climbed the cliff and ran towards home with the seal skin flying behind him and into the house he fell. His mother swept him and the skin up and closed her eyes in gratitude for the safety of both. She pulled on her seal skin. Oh mother no! cried the child. She scooped up the child, tucked him under her arm and half ran, half stumbled towards the roaring sea. Oh, mother, don't leave me, Uruk cried. And at once you could tell she wanted to stay with her child. She wanted to. But something called her, something older than she, older than he, older than time. Oh, mother, no, 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 cried the child. She turned to him with a look of dreadful love in her eyes. She took the boy's face in her hands and breathed her sweet breath into his lungs. Once, twice, three times. Then with him under her arm like a precious bundle, she dove into the sea, down and down and down, and still deeper down, and the seal woman and her child breathed easily under the water. And they swam deep and strong till they entered the underwater cove of seals where all manner of creatures were dining and singing, dancing and speaking. And the great silver seal that had called to Uruk from the night sea embraced the child and called him grandson. How fare you up there, daughter? asked the great silver seal. The seal woman looked away and said, I hurt a human, a man who gave his all to have me, but I cannot return to him, for I shall be a prisoner if I do. And the boy, asked the old seal, my grandchild? He said it so proudly his voice shook. He must go back, father. He cannot stay. His time is not yet to be here with us. And she wept. And together they wept. And so some days and nights passed, seven to be exact, during which time the luster came back to the seal woman's hair and eyes. She turned a beautiful dark colour, her sight was restored, her body regained its plumpness and she swam uncrippled. And yet it came time to return the boy to land. On that night, the old grandfather seal and the boy's beautiful mother swam with the child between them. Back they went, back up and up and up to the topside world. There they gently placed Uruk on the stony shore in the moonlight. 
His mother assured him, I am always with you. Only touch what I have touched. My fire sticks, my ulu, knife, my stone carvings of otters and seal, and I will breathe into your lungs a wind for the singing of your songs. The old silver seal and his daughter kissed the child many times. At last they tore themselves away and swam out to sea, and with one last look at the boy, they disappeared beneath the waters. And Uruk, because it was not his time, stayed. As time went on, he grew to be a mighty drummer and singer and a maker of stories. And it was said that this all came to be because he was a child that had survived being carried out to sea by the great seal spirits. Now, in the grey mists of morning, sometimes he can still be seen with his kayak tethered, kneeling upon a certain rock in the sea, seeming to speak to a certain female seal who often comes near the shore. Though many have tried to hunt her time after time, they have failed. She is known as Tankigak the bright one, the holy one, and it is said that although she be a seal, her eyes are capable of portraying those human looks, those wise and wild and loving looks. The end. I love that so much and apologies um, for any words I may have mispronounced, um, but yeah the splendor of that story so i'll leave it with you and thanks for listening bye